talk about the shocking nudity on this show, but we're also going to talk about some really interesting subjects. And I think it's going to surprise you that Pam and Tommy, both the show and the couple, are so much more than just the sex tape. This is fascinating. This is such a good show. And I really hope that people check it out beyond, because most of the nudity is up front. So I hope that people, and this isn't a, it's not a single season dropped all at once. It starts out with three episodes. It's engineered to land with a bang. Uh, but then you have to watch the remaining eight week to week. And I really hope people do, because what this show accomplishes is incredible. There's no spoilers. There's no big spoilers in this review. But I, I really want to call attention to just how good this show is. Uh, it's amazing. It's incredible. All right. And um, you might be wondering how are, I know a lot of you will be also tuning in for Lily James and Sebastian Stan. They are both incredible ca career defining performances. And I'm aware that Sebastian Stan is the winter soldier, but this is the best thing I've ever seen him do. All right, so like most of Seth Rogen's work, who co-stars here and also co-developed this miniseries, along with serving as one of the executive producers, Pam and Tommy is hardcore raunchy, but also incredibly clever and insightful. Ryan Murphy found great success with the People vs. O.J. Simpson American Crime Story. Remember that? What a show. A success Murphy himself has not been able to duplicate. But here comes Rogan with his own take on that, which, while not quite at the level of the legendary O.J. miniseries, comes incredibly close. It comes real close. It's, it's really strong. If you liked The People vs. O.J. Simpson, you will also love this show. Yes, there's nudity, especially in episode two from our two stars. The series premieres February 2nd, as I said, with the first three episodes, and it is sure to trend, especially thanks to episode two. And while they're sporting prosthetics, those prosthetics are incredibly convincing. Basically, Sebastian Stan goes full frontal with a twist that's very Seth Rogen. You really get in there. And Lily James is topless a number of times. It's worth noting that in her work for Playboy, Pamela Anderson often went full frontal herself, but American TV isn't quite there yet. On that note, I really want to make this, because this was one of the most, I think, important, there's everything this show touches on is important. And I think people might be so focused on the nudity and the sensationalism of the show, they miss these very important points. But Pammy and to, uh, Pam, Pam and Tommy is a very, very compellingly making the distinction between nudity that is intentionally released by someone with not just their consent, but they have oversight of how that nudity is presented and having nudity that's meant to be private exposed against someone's will that they had absolutely no say in how it was released or presented. That is a crucial distinction. And this show makes that distinction, not just intellectually, but emotionally. The episode where Lily James portrays Pamela Anderson having to go through an incredibly cruel and toxic deposition is a gut punch and so important to depicting what so many women find themselves going through. That was just one of the best, most amazing things I've ever seen. Now, in addition to nudity for uh, Pam and Tommy, those characters, there's also just a ton of nudity and sex scenes throughout the show across the board, sometimes just going on in the background during a scene, because the porn industry is a huge player in this story as well. For real, so not just sensationalizing this, you'll discover that the porn industry is how the tape got out, but also, this is amazing, that Pam and Tommy's sex tape actually helped revolutionary, revolutionize the porn industry and bring it into the digital age. This is the thing that was responsible for that. I mean, it probably would have happened anyway, but this was, this was what did it. It's incredible. Fred Heckinger, best known as Quinn on the White Lotus, steals his scenes as an up and coming player in the porn industry who believes websites are the future. How he helps resolve the leaked sex tape situation is fascinating. It blew my mind and it's true, true story. Also, Heckinger is totally going to be in competition for roles going forward with none other than Macaulay Culkin. They have very much the same vibe, so much so that I was like, Macaulay Culkin, you should have gotten this role. And what do you know, by the way, Culkin has made a bit of a comeback recently working for Ryan Murphy. Uh, Rogue, uh, 
Ryan Murphy should be concerned that Seth Rogen might be coming for his crown a little bit. Rogen's a very talented producer. Now, Pam and Tommy is not just about the leaked sex tape and the evolution of the porn industry, but the evolution of celebrity as well, with the internet making it harder for Hollywood to control the narrative with traditional measures of control like lawsuits, which are not nearly as effective here as they once were. Pam and Tommy trying to figure out what the internet even is and how to get on it. I will not ruin the scene for you. It's so, so fantastic. It's absolutely hilarious, but also terrifying considering the invasion of privacy from anonymous sources that we all know the internet becomes for many people, but especially for celebrities. Also, you see an evolution of what big outlets consider news. Seeing the LA Times refuse to cover the leaked sex tape at first, or the Tonight Show's initial reluctance to discuss it in their monologues, is fascinating considering how quick those same platforms are to jump on those exact same type of stories today. They don't even think twice about it today. The actor playing Jay Leno, buried under his own prosthetics, does a great job and also highlights the power of The Tonight Show that it once had at one point uh, before the proliferation of late night television, as well as Leno's naive insensitivity to his female guests' feelings. I think that this show is very fair to The Tonight Show. I think that it presents both the positive, you know, the good and the bad of, the, of what The Tonight Show accomplished at that time. Uh, I think people forget how big The Tonight Show was, especially under Jay Leno. Uh, the show is, um, oh, also, th there's a great commentary on a mostly male press at the time, uh, especially when it comes to entertainment, to see all these male reporters thinking that this leaked sex tape is cool and have no thought to how Pamela Anderson might actually feel about it is really interesting to watch. And I think, I think the show is fair in that it didn't occur to those individuals at the time, but today there's of course no excuse. And I think their content like Pam and Tommy helps make that clear. Uh, this show is also a great crash course in how to handle damage control, especially for women who unfortunately do have a different set of rules. Then on the other hand, I think the show sometimes goes too far in trying to romanticize the situation, in a couple of places actually. But for instance, the show puts forward that Pamela Anderson might have beat out Kim Basinger and Elizabeth Hurley for their roles in LA Confidential and Austin Powers respectively, if not for the bad publicity of this tape. Come on, barbed wire was not just poorly reviewed, but a huge box office flop, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous to suggest that. And I think there are other ways they could have done Pamela Anderson justice, which we'll discuss in a moment. At least the show does acknowledge that barbed wire was a major misfire. And in a very sympathetic way though, as well, this show, is, this show itself, while depicting a lot of toxic behavior is not toxic at all. It's very well thought out. Well, there's one big flaw. We'll get to that in a moment. moment. But Pam and Tommy thinking they're super cool, but then discovering that people are laughing at them is heartbreaking and very well done by the show and the way they depict that. One of the most surprising things about Pam and Tommy, did not expect this at all, is the romance depicted between them brought to life beautifully by Lily James and Sebastian Stan. Touchingly and very humorously, both of them do a great job. But eventually Tommy Lee in real life was arrested and served time for spousal abuse and you see no hint of that here. It's hard to believe. I wish that the show had alluded to that a little bit instead of deciding to make their, their romance feel like a Hollywood fairy tale that only fell apart due to outside forces. I think there's certainly culpability from you know, Tommy Lee. Uh, my other problem, here's the big problem, the biggest problem I have with this show, but it shouldn't keep it from succeeding because it does so much good otherwise. But Pam and Tommy does exactly what it accuses of everyone else doing, and that's objectifying Pamela Anderson. Lake Bell, a female director, and of course the voice of Poison Ivy uh, on uh, the Harley Quinn show, directs several of the episodes very well, so there were female voices around behind the camera. But that Pamela Anderson gets so little character development and Tommy Lee so much. Like you really feel you get to know Tommy Lee, but I never felt even after watching the whole show that I got, that I knew anything about what made Pamela Anderson tick, what she was like as a person. It's odd and disheartening. Even though Pamela Anderson herself did not want to be involved with this show and has spoken out about it publicly quite aggressively, the show still owes it to her and women to create a richer role. Lily James does an amazing job with what she is given and often looks startlingly like Pamela Anderson. Sometimes it comes across a little bit as a caricature, but as the show progresses, she gets a chance to do some really great acting. Will this role do for her what Wolf of Wall Street did for Margot Robbie? I'm very interested to see if that's the case. 
The real star of the show, though, is Sebastian Stan, who actually looks nothing like Tommy Lee, but sells it with incredible big dick energy. <laughs> That's the perfect way to describe his performance. It's real. Once you see see the movie, but you see his his performance, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Tommy Lee's role is very in depth and nuanced, and St Sebastian Stan plays him as an incredibly kind man for the most part. He makes some definite mistakes, nothing to the degree that he apparently did in real life, but overall, he just he's depicted as, as an incredibly winning person. Which again, as, I, as I'm saying, makes the battery conviction seem out of place. And before you maybe say, well, you know, that's really dangerous because Tommy Lee pleaded no contest to that and did serve six months in jail for it. So to put out the, to make it seem like it's out of character for him is not fair to Pamela Anderson, who of course suffered that abuse. The show overall has top-notch production values, excellent pacing, fantastic music choices. With Cruella and I, Tanya's Craig Gillespie directing the first three episodes and setting the tone for the rest of the eight. Uh, he doesn't direct any more of them, but they all seamlessly fit together. So even if NC-17 content, and it's, and it's NC-17 for sure, if that makes you hesitant to watch this show, if you're someone like me who normally wouldn't watch an NC something that was NC-17, I really hope you check this out. I, I really do. I mean, considering what television is like these days, especially television streaming, you know, with like HBO leading the way, there's nothing, I mean, this is a bit beyond that, to be honest with you, but it's not out of the same arena. So there's so much, there, Pam and Tommy cover so many important topics so well and depict such a fascinating point in our modern cultural history, you really should check it out. And on the flip side of that, if you are just tuning in for the salacious aspects, I hope that you stick around and think about it a little bit more after that to see all these great things that are being said, because that's really great. Uh, I also hope that Sebastian Stan and Lily James get even more work off of this show as it really showcases their acting ability, especially Sebastian Stan, who, as I said, this is the best thing I'm ever he, I've ever seen him do. And he was had a small role in Gillespie's I, Tanya, opposite Margot Robbie. So, you know, this shows the importance also of relationships in Hollywood and how that really ended up paying off for Stan with such an incredible role. As for Rogan, this highlights just what a consistent actor he is. I know I haven't spent a lot of time on him here, but he is a big force in the film. I think he adds a great different flavor to the story, uh, you know, him and uh, Nick Offerman outside of uh, what Sebastian Stan and Lily James are doing. So I think it makes it, it chops up the show to give it a really, it doesn't feel like this, it doesn't have a sameness to it. He does a great job, but you know, he delivers what Rogan always does and why I'm a fan of his work. But I'm also becoming a big fan of his work as a producer. He's really getting an, an amazing resume. So that's my review of Pam and Tommy, another great look at a celebrity couple dealing with adversity right after the also excellent but very different being the Ricardos. But they are also, you know, they're very different, but they're also very much cut from the same cloth. And I think both are really must watches. Pam and Tommy hits Hulu and also Disney Plus under the star category in some countries. The fact that this is on Disney Plus anywhere and it's NC-17 is incredible. Uh, but maybe it'll be a good test for Disney Plus in terms of, exp I don't know if Disney, I don't know. It's tough. I think the Disney brand is so important to it. I think that Hulu actually does work having that as a, a as their more adult brand. Uh, just like they had Touchstone back in the day, you know, it wasn't on something that was actually called Disney. But anyway, um, uh, this starts Wednesday, February 2nd, a week from today, with the first three episodes, uh, which again are quite sensational, before moving to weekly release. And I really hope that after the first three amazing episodes, you stick with it because it is so worth it. So worth it. Such an important conversation and such a well done one. All right, share those thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.